Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be checking out Zankyo Sanka by Aimer. Aimer is a name that has been floating around my comment sections for quite a while and we're going to go ahead and remedy that today. I do see that this is from Demon Slayer and I haven't heard the full version yet so this will be my first time listening to that and really taking it in without the distraction of having a Demon Slayer episode attached to it. And guys, feel free to check out my YouTube memberships. They're only a dollar and you get early access to videos like these and other reactions. So we're just going to go ahead and jump on into this. The memories. Whoa. <laughs> That's huge. Cool video. I didn't realize how much jazz was infused into this. Really amazing drummer, wow. That drummer is insane. Oh my god. Good vocals too, very mature vocal tone. Holy crap. Emmet. Okay, so let me amend this. I said her name wrong. According to Google, it's it's Emme. So feel free to school me a little bit on, on the pronunciation of that if I got it right the second time. <laughs> So for sure I got it wrong the first time. Apologies for that. I'm just kind of looking over her bio a little bit. It says here at the age of 15, she lost her voice due to vocal cord overuse. She underwent silence therapy. And then when she recovered, she acquired a distinctive husky voice, which was interesting because when I was paying attention to her vocal tone, I was saying it had a, a mature tone to it. It was, I don't know how else to describe it. It was a, a very, to me, very like womanly, very mature, definitely distinctive amongst all the other female artists I've heard so far. So I was right to assume that there was some jazz infusion in there. From the description here, some of the genres that she seems to cover or at least infuse into her music is jazz. Definitely the, the drums were a giveaway, the horns. It really reminds me of older uh, Yoko Kano days uh, whenever she was making music with the seatbelts when they were doing music for Cowboy Bebop. This song is massive. There are so many things going on that it kind of outdoes her a little bit, not from a technical sense, but just in pure sound. The fact that it's just so many things going on and it's all of them versus her, you know? So it was a little difficult for me to 
to kind of stray away from the instruments. We may have to do some sort of like first take reaction. You know what? Screw it. Let's do it right now. This is great. She's a lot more prominent in this recording here. But even in this deconstructed version, you can see what I was saying in that a lot of instruments going on, but you have to you have to give them all room so that they do have to have presence there so there's there's really no way out of that you know mm, i love this slow down part Awesome. She's so adorable too. You just want to want to protect her from from everything. <laughs> I'm glad I decided to to check out the the first take version as well. And and just in case I wasn't clear, there's just so many instruments and if they have to be there and you have to give them all room within the mix to be heard and she's just one person, it could be a very difficult feat for the engineers to have everyone in there and not have them be so powerful. In the studio version, it sounds amazing, you know, and, and you can still sit there and perhaps during different listens, you can focus more on her than others. But I, for me, I would have to consciously focus on her so that I don't focus on all the other instruments because there's just so much going on, which can be a good thing because then that means people are going to be listening to your song more often be and be able to get different things out of every listen if they decided to choose a different instrument to focus on. I tend to do that with several other songs, but it's been a while since I've heard a production this big where I feel like I, cr I really could just focus on maybe guitar this time, maybe the drums that time, and then maybe her on the third time, you know, whatever. So th there's definitely a lot of things to chew on on, every on any listen that you decide to do. But here, at least in a deconstructed version, I was able to just focus on her. And plus with the video itself, sometimes videos can be a little complicated and there's like a lot of visuals going on. With this, I'm able to just focus on her and be fine. There were times where I did want to look at the drummer because I, I was like, because that drummer is awesome. But otherwise, we were able to focus on her more and visually that helps me focus on her. What I found interesting about her demeanor, um, and I've kind of noticed this in other vocalists too, especially the ones from Japan, is that they all have this kind of 
timid energy sometimes, but then when they you get a mic in front of them, all of a sudden they just explode with emotion. And it's just really fascinating to observe. So I do appreciate these sort of videos in which we do get to see the artists just standing there in front of a microphone and maybe they feel a little out of place. I think having that openness in a setting like that can really help people with their own shyness and then see people at this level be like, wow, even at that level, it's still okay to to be a little timid, to be a little shy, if it, if that's just what your personality is, it's fine. I'm glad we were able to, to get two videos out of this and this reaction, but I would like to get some music from her that I, where I haven't seen the show or anything like that. So if there's any other songs from her you want me to check out, feel free to let me know in the comments. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed the reaction and I'll see you next time.